almost all the properties of differentiation is a consequence of the mean value theorem. So we will first prove the mean value theorem and then in a dedicated module prove the various consequences. Then in another module we shall see the most powerful consequence of the mean value theorem, Taylor's theorem. So let's begin with a simple lemma. Let's begin with a simple lemma. Let f be differentiable, differentiable on open interval a b, a less than b, just to ensure that it's not the empty set. Suppose, suppose for some c in a b, f attains its maximum at c. What I mean by this is, that is, f of x is less than or equal to f of c for all x in a, b. This is a point of maximum of the function f. Then, f prime at c is 0. The derivative of a function at a point where it attains its maximum in the open interval a, b is always going to be 0. And the proof of this is directly from the very definition of the Newton quotient. So let's take the derivative at c. So this f prime of c is nothing but limit h going to 0 of f of c plus h minus f of c by h. Okay. Now, note that the numerator, note that the numerator is always going to be less than or equal to 0. The numerator has to be negative. Why is that? Because the point of maximum is at C. So, the numerator is non-positive. That's the correct way to say it. The numerator is non-positive. But the denominator could be positive or negative depending on whether h is greater than 0 or h is less than 0. So, if h is less than 0, then the above limit, the above limit, the above limit is non-negative because the numerator is non-positive and the denominator is negative, the quotient will have to be non-negative. On the other hand, on the other hand, if h is greater than 0, then the quotient, the Newton quotient, quotient is non-positive because the denominator is positive whereas the numerator is non-positive therefore the quotient will have to be non-positive. The only possibility, the only possibility is f prime of c equal to 0. As you approach from the right and the left, the signs are different. Therefore, at the point c, the only possibility is that f prime of c is 0. Okay, that was rather easy. We immediately get a nice consequence of this, which you might have heard is called Rolle's theorem. Rolle's theorem. Theorem. Rolle's theorem. It says the following. Let a b subset of R be an interval, interval a less than b. Suppose f is continuous, continuous on the close interval a b, differentiable, differentiable on the open interval a b and f of a equal to f of b. So you have a function which is continuous on the closed interval a b, differentiable on the open interval a b and such that f of a is equal to f of b. The values at the end points coincide. Then we can find, we can find 
C in A B such that such that f prime of c is equal to 0. Proof. Again the proof is going to be a straightforward application of the previous lemma. If f is constant, if f is constant, nothing to prove, nothing to prove. Okay. Now suppose, suppose for some x greater than a but less than b, f of x is greater than f of a. We are assuming now that the function is non-constant. First we make the assumption that at some point in the open interval a, b, f of x is greater than f of a. Because a, b is compact, is compact, f attains, attains its maximum somewhere at some point, at some point c in the closed interval a, b. But the end points, the values are equal and we already know that f of x is greater than f of a. So, in fact, in fact, c must belong to the open interval a, b because of this. The end points, the values are same. Somewhere in the interior at the point x, it is greater than f of a. There must be a point c in the open interval a, b on which the maximum is assumed. Here, I am using the fact that continuous functions on compact sets attain its ma attains its maxima and minima, right? I am just going to use the maximum. Then f prime of c is 0 by previous lemma, by previous lemma, okay? Now the other case is suppose, suppose f of x is less than f of a for some x in open interval a b. Then, then the previous lemma, previous lemma can be rephrased for minima. The same proof with a very, very, very minus modification will tell you that at a point of minima also, the derivative is 0. Exact same proof, just slight modification. For minima and the above proof, the above proof can also be modified. Proof can also be modified. So, this will be a pattern in uh, even in this module as well as the next few ones where I will just phrase it for one case. All the other cases are really straightforward and at this stage you should be mature enough to be able to prove them on your own without even opening your eyes. Okay, so this is done, hence proved, hence proved. So this is a geometrically obvious theorem, again that requires a proof. So this is what Rolle's theorem is saying. If you have the point a, b and you have that the graph of the function returns to where it is. The way I have drawn it, f of a equal to f of b equal to 0, but that does not really matter. All this is saying is, if the values have to return, then the curve has to at some point become flat and turn. At that point, when you consider the tangent line and the slope of the tangent, that has to be 0. So, it is proving something that is geometrically obvious in a rigorous way. Now, we come to Lagrange's, Lagrange's, Lagrange's mean value theorem, mean value theorem. Since this is going to be re, uh, re, again and again used, I will just abbreviate it as MVT, so that there is economy. Let again f b f from a b to r be continuous and 
differentiable differentiable continuous okay uh, to be since this is an important theorem i'm not going to leave out any hypothesis that f from ab to rb continuous on ab and differentiable on open interval ab okay again a is less than b then there exists a point c in the open interval ab such that f of b minus f of a is equal to f prime at c times b minus a okay now this result might seem mystifying and you can immediately dispel this mysticism by a simple picture so suppose you have some function suppose you have some function like this now this result if you if you have f of b equal to f of a the left hand side is zero therefore this result is actually proved as rolle's theorem when f of b equal to f of a but we might not have f of b equal to f of a right in general so what this is saying is if you join if you join this if you join this the slope of this line the slope is f of b minus f of a by b minus a this is from high school high school uh, analytic geometry the slope of the line is given by f of b minus f of a by b minus a now what we are going to do is we are going to view this function this function sort of as a graph as a graph over this line we are going to view this function as a graph over this line and then apply rolle's theorem okay so all this is saying is if i view this function as a graph over this line there will be a point where the slope will be parallel okay so if i am viewing this as a graph that means that function's derivative at this point is actually zero fine so this is a bit vague but the proof will make it very clear what is happening proof proof now we want to apply rolle's theorem we want to apply rolle's theorem to a new function so we define g of x g of x by definition to be f of x f of x minus f of b minus f of a by b minus a times x minus a okay so we have defined the new function g of x equal to f of x minus f of b minus f of a by b minus a into x minus a then g of a is going to be equal to f of a minus 0 which is f of a okay uh, and g of b is going to be equal to f of b f of b minus f of b minus f of a okay and this is equal to f of a again this is equal to f of a again so what we have managed to do is we have managed to make g of a e equal to g of b by subtracting this f of b minus f of a by b minus a into x minus a right right so actually uh, to illustrate the point that uh, uh, i'm going to make this a graph over this particular line it's better to have subtracted a slightly different function but this 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 will do the job for us this will do the job for us okay now by the previous lemma by previous lemma or previous theorem that is rolle's theorem by previous theorem we can find we can find c 
in the open interval a b such that g prime of c which you can do the computation is going to be f prime of c minus uh, f of b minus f of a by b minus a is equal to 0 or in other words f of b minus f of a is equal to f prime of c into b minus a. So let me clarify one remark I made earlier that this this function will do the job for us but a better function is to consider I mean we are done with the proof I am just going to make some extra remarks so let me just put a box so remark 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 the line the line passing through through f of a a and b f of b is the graph of is the graph of l of x by definition is equal to f of a plus f of b minus f of a by b minus a into x minus a okay okay this is actually going to be the graph so l from a b to r this l of x is actually the equation of this line of this line from a to b okay so alternatively if you could have this is, this is almost exactly same as the function we subtracted except one slight change will happen if you consider f of x minus l of x you would have landed up with the symmetric situation and call this the function g you would have ended up with g of a equal to g of b equal to 0 okay you would have landed up with this nice symmetric situation where g of a equal to g of b equal to 0 that's the only difference fine you could have applied the rolls theorem now and concluded the proof so from the next module onwards we shall see applications of the mean value theorem this is a course on real analysis and you have just watched the module on the mean value theorem